What's going on guys, Victor here, and I got a really special treat today. I got this giant African pompano. It is my biggest one, and uh, I'm really excited, number one, because I've never eaten them before. You can eat them sashimi style, all sorts of ways. I'm gonna prepare a couple different recipes with this guy, and I'm just stoked because I got to break in a new rod. Brooke and I just had an awesome day on the water. So stick around for the fishing portion of this video, and then you guys are gonna meet me back at the fillet table. We're gonna fillet this guy up. So here's where we're at guys. We trolled all morning and I'm talking not just us. There must have been, I'd say 150 boats out here. Easily. The most boats I've honestly ever seen fishing before out here. Because yesterday was epic. I've heard, I heard when we got reports of several boats, a lot of the charter boats out here, you know, going like 10 for 24, multiple boats getting two, three, four Wahoo, which is not that common for our area. And it was like just boats insane. Boats getting 10, 10 to 12 Wahoo. That's, yeah. That's we tried yesterday afternoon. We got one nice black fin. Brooklyn We'll make a video of a catch and cook and, and kingfish and kingfish we've talked to a bunch of buddies and there have been very few wahoo caught this morning um so what we're gonna do now is there's this other wreck in 300 feet close to Boca inlet we're gonna go try that and see what we can pull up we got some live dogs right here brooks jigging i'm gonna rig this guy up and we're gonna get ready to make another drop big circle hooks nino circle hooks and uh 80 pound fluorocarbon leader you want to fish heavy heavy gear around wreck because these fish will take you to town there's sharks down there the wrecks down there Oh boy. Oh, we're on. Yep, 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 yep. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> Insta bite on the guard. That was so fast. <laughs> that was literally just freight train. Maybe a, a pompano or a grouper. That was so fast. Oh, guys, this reel, this is the first time I've gotten tight on this reel and this rod. It feels so good. You mean from the top? Yeah. It looks pompano y, doesn't it? It does. It's like a big African pompano. What is it? Oh, it's a big African pompano. It is. Go, 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 Sick. Go, go, go. Get him, babe. Get him. Right in the head. Yeah. There we go. Woo. Yeah. Good job, babe. Look at that gaff shot. Hell yes. On the new Conley rod. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those things throw down. Oh, that was on a live gog, guys. Check that out. These things are beautiful, beautiful fish and really good to eat too. And this guy's a keeper. Chase after a different species. That's it. Mustad circle hook in the corner of the mouth. That demon circle, my favorite circle hooks. Big old African popping. Let's see its head, babe. These things are such pretty fish, guys, and uh, very prevalent around wrecks. That's my biggest one. All right, guys, so we, Brooke and I were actually just about to switch spots or get back on this wreck and do another drop. And uh, I was reeling the gog up and I thought it got hit. I wasn't sure. The rod just doubled over and... You've been getting some nice action on this new rod. Yes, I love it. This is the new Conley rod you guys saw in the video and it's perfectly set up to drop down big stuff on wrecks in a light package because I got the, the Raptor on here and it puts out a ton of drag because you guys normally you see me using my 50, but um, it's so much more fun to fight them on this. I love dropping down on a wreck, love dropping down a live gog because you really never know what you're gonna hook. You can hook a black grouper, mutton, AJ, African pompano, anything. Oh no, it's a jack. No. Yeah, it is. It's a jack. It's an Alamoco. Well, look, he spit the gog back up. Thing fought way harder than that African pompano did. These things, pound for pound, just throw down. Circle hook. 
Now I feel like a wimp. <laughs> nice Almaco Jack. These are also very good for the dinner table. And you guys can tell Almacos have a really tall pointed dorsal fin and they have more of a broader body as opposed to greater amberjacks and uh, lesser amberjacks as well. So normally you guys see us keep the jacks because usually I keep them for shark bait. I'm actually letting that one go. So you guys see this hole right here? This is actually the gaff shot from Brooke who's behind the camera and that is exactly where you want to gaff a fish in the head or right around here. You don't ruin the meat. I'm excited to fillet this. I've never filleted one before but just like with any fish I always check right around the head because a lot of times fish, uh, dolphin and other things, their head meat will protrude into their head. A lot of times it'll cut off right there and it looks like it's soft right here. So that's exactly where I'm gonna start with my knife. You guys see it, it runs right down there. And then what I'll do is I'll come right around here and I'll run my knife right alongside all the way to the belly and over the ribs and join my section right there. And then I'll start right here by the head meat, running my knife along the backbone. Trying not to saw, just to really run it. Running it straight down in solid motions. And whenever you fillet a new fish, it's always different because every fish, you know, it has its little nuances and there's tricks and trades to every fish. Fish's anatomy and body. So it's my first one, but we're up for the challenge. Now we do the exact same thing. And oh my gosh, is this meat looking good, guys. You can tell it's firm. This fish is not bloody. You guys hear that? That's the sound of my knife running along the bone. And that's exactly what you want to do. You always want it to run right along that backbone. If you don't hear it, that means you're probably missing meat like I did right there. And see that? This is what I'm talking about, that head meat. You could miss a nice little section right there, you know? That's a nice little fish sandwich if you bypass it. A lot of people would just start right there. And uh, really white. And these fish are just so beautiful. I mean, they got all this silver on them. And when they're smaller, actually, like the other, um, a while ago, Brooke and I went out and she caught a bunch of juveniles on knives and they have these tracers when they're, when they're little. And they lose them when they get to be adults, such as this size. Bigger fish, what I like to do, I like to do in kind of sections and loins. So I do a top loin and a bottom loin. It makes it easier, that way you don't have to keep lifting that flab up. So I'm gonna run my knife right alongside the middle right here. All the way down to the bo bone and all the way to the tail. And then I can do it in sections. You know, I do a top loin and a bottom loin. You get all this right here. My knife is right alongside that bone. Beautiful, beautiful meat. And the funny thing is, these are not pompano. These are called African pompano, but they're not in the pompano family at all. They're actually jacks. And a lot of people do not like jacks because the, the meat is really red. They're a very, they're a gamier fish. They're an oilier fish, but this does not look like a jack whatsoever. Really, really white firm fillets. Some of the best looking fish I've ever seen. Most fish, what happens is their meat will kind of concave up towards the middle. So if you run your knife kind of parallel, you're gonna miss meat right alongside that backbone. That's why you always kind of run it down when you get to the other side. So you know how I told you guys every fish has its own little nuances in anatomy? Well, these guys are very bony at the uh, outsides of them. And trying to cut through that is not easy. A lot of times you can just go right through that, but these guys are very bony in that area. And then now we get to the uh, belly gut section. And this is where you don't have meat. This is all gonna be waste. Kind of just always with fish, you have that bottom loin, but you have a lot more waste in the bottom loin than you do the top loin. Cause fish is all fish, their anatomy. Um, all their guts are usually on the bottom loin. And then you cut around here. So the fish like this, jacks tend to have a really big rib cage right around here. And you lose a lot of meat right there as well. Kind of just gotta try to uh, coast your knife along um, above those bones rather than go through it. Otherwise you're just gonna be giving yourself a painful time. You see that? You guys hear that? Those are some thick bones. And I know a lot of people, what they'll do is all around the world, um, they take the rib cage meat right here. They'll cut the ribs out and they'll make soup out of it. When we were in the Bahamas, the Bahamians, you know, they laugh at all of us, all of us Westerners, cause we just take the fillets, we discard the fish. They take the belly meat, they take the rib cage, and that's the most fit, flavorful part of the fish. They make fish tea, they make fish soups out of it. So there we go. Say pretty good for our first time, flaying an African pompano, an AP. My favorite part of the video and favorite part of flaying is checking the stomachs of the fish. 
And this guy's got some gnarly guts. A lot of times you get fish based on the species and they don't have a lot of guts. Some of them do. So let's check this guy's, oh, there's something big in there. So this is what was inside his stomach. This is a goggle eye and you can tell it actually looks pretty fresh, but I don't know what the heck this is from. I don't know how he did that. Maybe when he inhaled it, it crushed it with his crushers. But other than that, this guy was hungry. See you later, Mr. African Pompano. Hope to catch your big brother one day. He's going for his last swim. Perfect skin job right there. Chef Vic coming back at you with another voiceover. Now, I don't want to toot my own horn, guys, but I'm telling you right now, this recipe was to die for, so pay close attention. Now, the first thing I'm doing, I took one medium-sized onion, chopping it up, mincing it up, as well as some garlic, which I'm going to uh, smash up. And uh, this is going to be the base for the sauce that I'm about to whip up because I'm going to be poaching my fish. But first things first is I got some garlic and onion. Now this is the amount of garlic I used. It was about half of a head of garlic. And I found this is the easiest way to smush up your garlic and get those shells off going into the garlic press. And as well for our sauce, this is going to be of a tomato based sauce. I got some uh, tomatoes right here. Uh, don't have to go anything crazy, just small pieces, you know what I mean? Um, but definitely best to use fresh tomatoes, not canned tomatoes, because the flavor of fresh tomatoes, you just cannot beat it. And uh, before I move on to that, I'm actually also going to be making a sashimi bowl with the AP. So I got some soy sauce, some mirin, and some rice uh, wine vinegar. And this is going to be a trifecta to make a sauce to dip my sashimi in. So I got the soy sauce going in, you got the rice and wine vinegar, and the mirin. And this is all kind of, uh, I, I did equal amounts, you know, probably a third, third, and third, as well as some scallion. I'm going to be going into our mixture, that trifecta. And I kind of just let this marinate, sit in the fridge, and oh my gosh, was it so good to dip your fish in. Now here is my African pompano. You guys notice how I have it in a nice kind of like box-like shape? That is because I want my sashimi to be in slices, into thin slices. That's the most enjoyable way, I think, to eat sashimi. You want nice bite-sized pieces, and you guys, this, this fish was just so good. You see how it kind of just glistens? It's screaming, bite me and eat me. Now I got some basil. I'm gonna chop this guy up because this is also going in our sauce. And I know these uh, clips are kind of out of order, but this is the way I did them. I got some radishes also being sliced up, and this is going to be for the garnish for my sashimi uh, platter, as well as some cilantro leaves, as well as some scallions diced into diagonal sections. And I try to get a little fancy here, you know, always trying to push myself in the kitchen with that scallion. Now we got some butter going into a medium high pan. I'm going to be melting this down and now next things next is going to be my onions. I gotta get my onions in there and I gotta brown them up. And the reason I chopped them up so small is because I want them to brown very fast. You guys see them? That's about the color that I want. After they got brown, tossed my tomatoes in, my diced tomatoes, and did not cook this very long, maybe two or three minutes, in which I proceeded to add my garlic and making sure I don't burn my garlic. As you guys see, the, hot, the heat is still high. Uh, you know, kind of just get it a little bit browned. And then next is the lemongrass. I did not find fresh lemongrass at Publix, so I just went and went ahead and added this paste. Very key ingredient for this recipe. Um, you want to talk about flavor and aromatics. Lemongrass, oh my gosh, was it so good. I got to start using it more often. Now, we got coconut milk. I went ahead and added an entire can. I think it was a 12 ounce can of coconut milk in here. Brought it up to a boil. This is where I added my fresh basil and I let this sauce develop for at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, reduce the heat to low, let it really simmer. You guys see I'm adding a little bit more coconut milk to get the right consistency. Now, back to our sashimi platter. Those are some celery leaves as well as some radishes going on there. You got the scallion, uh, the tops. And you know, this, this was my first time really making a, a sashimi platter and I've come to realize, you know, how much detail and creativity there is in the kitchen and, you know, it's all about just colors, making those greens and reds and everything pop. I got some basil leaves going on there 
and uh, some radish stalks, some celery, put some, uh, you know, sriracha on there, get a little spice going, and I'm always kind of just trying to work and push myself. Okay, I got four um, of the African pompano slices going in, try to get them in uniform pieces, and I am poaching my fish in this sauce to get it really nice, juicy, and uh, it does not dry out your fish at all. And you guys are gonna see people's reactions. It was very, very good. I took the fish out and I added some spinach, probably half of a bag of a, a big bag of spinach in there. Let that cook down. Didn't take more than five minutes. And voila, look at that. You guys, juicy, juicy fish. I'm gonna start poaching fish more often. Uh, there's some jasmine rice to go with it on the side. And I'm telling you guys, you gotta try this. It was one of my top 10 favorite recipes. Uh, sashimi platter going right there, you know, just a nice little presentation, and this guy was gone within minutes. Everyone loved it, it was a big hit. It's my favorite fish, excellent. Excellent salmon, very good. Number one. Number one? The, the sauce, I don't know how you did it, you have to describe your viewers, but the sauce was mm, so good, so good, really delicious. And what do you think about the sashimi? Yeah, I just ate it. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Yeah, you don't even taste the fishy uh, taste, very smooth fish, very good. All right, let me just say I am so glad that I came to Victor's Catch and Cook tonight because it was so good. It was probably my favorite fish recipe I've ever had. It was creamy, it was just, all around amazing. I honestly want more of it. I could eat it tomorrow, I could eat it the next day. It was so, so good. You guys heard it, you heard the verdict. It was a very big hit. And I have heard, you know, when I caught the African pompano, a bunch of people messaged me and commented, they're like, dude, you're gonna like it. I've never eaten it. Brooks gotten to eat it. And I'm so happy that, you know, I made it a couple different ways. Last night at Brooks house, fried, excellent. Texture on point. Tonight we made it sashimi style, one of the best fish sashimi style I've ever had. Let me tell you guys, poaching, oh my gosh, it was so good. And I think that's why everyone liked the sauce so much because all those flavors developed. They said it, everyone here at the table said it was their number one recipe that I've done and I honestly think the same. And this was the first time every single piece of fish, everything was gone. Everyone's plate is completely empty. I mean, we went as far as putting the rice back into the sauce and eating it like that because it was just that good. And regardless of what kind of fish you get, it doesn't have to be an African pompano, try this recipe. I promise you, you're gonna love it. Oh yeah, it's flavorful, aromatic, just this is just really good. I want you to do me a huge favor and Brooke a favor. She also has a YouTube channel. If you guys don't know, this is my girlfriend. And she was actually the one who got this pompano in the head. So without her, this video wouldn't have been possible. So go ahead and check her channel out. And that will be in the description box below. So thank you guys, as always, for watching the video. And we'll be seeing all you guys, our land sharks, in that next video. Oh,